This is really nice. It's really sweet, really somber. It's nice. <laughs> I read you loud and clear. Bring the action. What's up, everybody? This is Blogger Zen, and guys, welcome to the Greenfield Village at the famous Henry Ford Museum, where today we're going on a tour, an adventure, a step back in time to the good old days of the uh, late 20th, of the late 19th and 20th centuries. What's up there? Hey, uh, oh, hey, I'm um, Harry. Harry. Harry, do you know what's up there? Because, um, I'm not too sure. Um, Harry, can you hear me there? Harry Potter? All five. <laughs> All like, five. You know what I say? Yeah. Thank God for being an only child. <laughs> All five. All five. Woo. Beep, 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 beep. Fall that Model T. Fall that Model T. I'm coming for you. Wait up. Oh, I remember that. What is the S? Ah. Oh, bien, ¿y tú? Ah, bien. Ah, muy bien. It's okay, I actually do speak, I do speak English. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk about your accent, that you weren't a native Spanish speaker? Oh, I've been, I've been working on it, though. Then you're doing good! <laughs> My boyfriend Thank speaks Spanish. Nice! Fluently. Believe me, he's hard to understand. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, that's the wrong country. Um, so here, we're showing you... Uh, welcome to 1760. This is home of Sam and Anna Daggett. What we're doing is we're giving you a tiny little glimpse into their colonial lifestyle and some of the things that they would have done on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, what we're doing is we are preparing a dinner meal. This would be something that Anna Daggett would have gotten up first thing in the morning and got her fire going so that she could have some nice hot coals to do any baking or frying that she needed. Today we are going to be, uh, we have some soup in here, some bean soup. We also have a carrot pudding, some baked beans, we're going to be frying some onions, uh, as well as baking a cherry tart, a dry cherry tart, because we are still in the spring season. Uh, we are using dried fruits and vegetables that we had harvested last year, and then we reconstitute them so that we can use them this year. I see. Um, and then we are going to be frying some onions as well, if I didn't say that already. And so this is quite a large meal. And we will hello, welcome to the Daggett Farmhouse. You were in 1760, and literally the house that you guys are standing in is older than the United States of America. Because we weren't yet an independent country until what year? 1776. 1776, and even then we weren't even formally recognized by the King of England until the 1780s. Who knew? Hmm. So the house itself was built in the 1750s. Yeah, we began construction about 1752. Oh, we're doing all right. How are you? Great. 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 Great.
Wait a minute. Oh, what? what, what? Dang it! My eyes deceive me? So that's where they come from. That's where we gotta go. That's where we're gonna ride a Model T today, y'all. Here we go! Oh my goodness. So close and so far. Can't believe we're about to do this. Oh my goodness, it's coming up. Coming really fast. That's a speeding bullet, more powerful than a jet airliner. was the first year Henry started that movie and assembly line which changed everything in the world. Oh yes it did. You're just like, wait a minute, we can make a hundred of these for the same time we made 50 in the past. Right, so, well yeah. it was even better than that. Oh yeah. He saved 11 hours of production time per car. So all of a sudden, instead of it taking 12 and a half hours to make the car, it only took an hour and a half. Wow. Ah, from start to finish. <laughs> so he started cranking these things out like crazy. Like butter. Like, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Matter of fact, by 1923, he was so efficient, he was making two million Model Ts in a single year. Wow. Two million. Nobody was even close to that number, so he was the biggest production maker. How do you do? How do you do? Over 15 million. In several years, he made right around 2 million. Wow. So by 1923, also, if you look at it, if you do the calculations, he had one car coming off the moving assembly line somewhere in the world. Every 24 seconds. So this was built on the assembly line. Amazing. There's some neat things about this. It's got factory install there. Mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> you can also shut it off with this big switch. I see. This big switch there. 
It also has cruise control, which is a very nice feature. Really? I didn't know that. You, well, my feet doing anything? No. My God, you're right. <laughs> it's cruise control. 1908. That's when he developed this. Car. Wow. So you wow. Can, this is your cruise control lever right there. I can speed up. Or I can slow down. <laughs> nice. All right. I I never knew that. Cruise control was actually that old. I thought it was more of a modern well, invention. It's not, it's not digital, you know, electronic. Yeah. It's more mechanical. But still, that's really impressive. So that made a nice feature for the model. It was easy to drive. Yeah. A lot of people bought this because it was easy. They're familiar with it. It's yeah. been around a long time. We made it for 19 years. This is the brake. The brake is a transmission brake. Wow. It's what it always had, the same brake transmission. So it's just a band that's squeezing the drivetrain to slow it down. Impressive. But also, you change the gears. It's two speed. You want to see that? There's low gear. It's low gear. And yep. now I'm going to throttle down. And I'll let that go and put the hot mix. Wow. And then I'll speed up and adjust my speed. It's in direct drive, the transmission is, when it's in high. The same. So most of the time it's in high. It's got a really cool horn. It's loud. Do it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that sound like a fart? Yeah. Sound like a cracking farting duck. Yes. So he made, um, with the assembly line, he started to make them faster, and it's, it's because... Well, it's thank goodness. Yeah. yeah. It seems like the it seems like the empires of the uh, men built America, their fall out was the people who they tried to help the most. Yeah. So anyway, he struggled with it. As he got older, he when you get older, you know, we get more stubborn and crankier and mm -hmm. and negative. And I think he just like everybody else. That he was. Yes. He wanted to. He actually was upset a little bit. I think that he changed the world with this car because this, <laughs> this was the yeah. affordable car. You could buy it for two hundred and ninety dollars by nineteen twenty-five. Yep. This, this is the one that people bought, so that it wasn't just rich people driving cars. Everybody could have Everybody a car. Could. Yeah. They, yeah, they could. Drive. They saved their money. Nowadays, they couldn't even even drive. Yeah. So. Speaking which, they, changed, they voted this car the car of the 20th century. Did you know that? 1999. This car did more to change the lives of people in the world. Wow. All over the world. I mean, he made them in Japan. Don't think he didn't make them everywhere. He made them in South Africa, Australia. Wow. England, France, Germany. Wow. Another that one is somewhere. amazing. I can't even name them all. There's like 40 different places you see with making Model T. Wow. wow. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. A fun job. You made another lifelong yeah, experience for me. This is my retirement job, but I don't call it a job, sir. Well, guys, that, that was an experience. <laughs> I mean, you're literally writing a piece of history right there. A car of the 20th century, one of the greatest experiences of my life, probably, and definitely a vacation I won't forget, guys. So until next time, guys, this is Vlogger Zen saying, peace out.